Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is my summer makes so far video. So I did my summer plans I think way back sometime in May, but I figured that if I waited until the end of the summer to show you everything I've made during the summer, one, you probably wouldn't be interested because summer is over, and two, the video would be probably 15 hours long. So I've decided to break it into a few chunks. So I'm going to do this one, which is my summer makes so far, and then I might do another one then in another few months or see how I get on to make them a little bit more manageable because I do have a huge pile of makes over here that I'm very, very keen to share with you all. So as always, thank you very, very much for watching my videos. To anybody who's uh, liked my videos, left a thumbs up or left a comment, thank you very, very much. Um, if you're new to my channel, you're very, very welcome. And if you're a regular subscriber, then welcome back. So I will dive straight in. This is everything I've got made up in the summer so far. That basically means since around the middle of May, so we're now the middle of start of July, so roughly two months. So I got everything here, got everything listed in my little notebook and let's just get cracking. So they're in no particular order. So first up is the Jennifer Lauren MET, which I just love. So I've made a good few of these now. This passion is relatively recent and as soon as it got released, I bought it straight away, which rarely happens. So it comes in two variations, one with a kind of a colour blocked front and one with a solid front. Oh, actually it comes in a long sleeve as well. I'll make that later in the year. Um, but for these ones, I just made the solid front and this one is this beautiful flamingo, you know how I feel about flamingos, cotton jersey from Crafty Studio. So it's got the grown on sleeves, it's got a lovely uh, wide scoop neckline and then I've made, I make the kind of halfway between the long version and the short version which which suits me fine. Um, this is my second time, this, this is my second version I should say, I think I've made another one since. Um, I made the straight side size 14 and I think the fit is really really great. I think it's a lovely staple t-shirt for summer. It's got the binding on the neckline and then it's got this lovely binding on the arms as well which I think gives a really really nice finish. So yeah really really nice t-shirt. I've been wearing this loads so I definitely recommend this pattern. I really really would. Uh, next up is a kilo wrap dress. So this is now my fourth kilo wrap dress and I got this fabric from Fabrics Galore in England and it is this beautiful eucalyptus print cotton jersey. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like it's got gold flecks in it but it's not. It's just kind of bronzy bits I guess. Um, it's not actually glitter or lurex or anything but it does from a distance look like it's glittery. I just fell in love with it. I think it's such a beautiful colour, such an unusual colour I think and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I made this at the Beyond the Pink Door sewing retreat there in May and it took me maybe a couple of hours, less than half a day to make it. So it was really really great. Wonderful that I was able to um, duck out halfway through and get some Miraflex thread that matched which is really great and I've also put the uh, Beyond the Pink Door Little Rosy Cheeks collab label in it as well because obviously. So I make the long sleeve version and this one is the knee length version so both of those um, measurements come on my pattern I believe. I have a slightly newer one so it does give the long length and the knee length version along with the jumpsuit. I think in some of the older versions of the Keeler Raptors it mightn't give those markings but yeah I think I think a few people have mentioned that they don't have knee markings on, on their uh, pattern but literally just measured down to my knee and just cut the pattern there and it, it seemed to match up which is perfect. It's got the lovely ties and it's just a really really lovely pattern. I make a size 12 with a bust grading to a 14 at the hips and it fits perfectly and it's such a great um, dress for work as well. Um, for all of these I'll pop in a picture here of me wearing them as well to give you a better idea and all of these are over on my Instagram channel as well and I give the full details of um, the size I've made and everything over there. If I do forget to say anything please leave a comment below I'd love to get back to you. So and this is my lovely Kila wrap dress so as I said yes this is number four and I don't really see the obsession stopping anytime soon such a great pattern really really great pattern I should say that's named fab named patterns is it the designer. Um, the next thing is Whistler sweatshirt. So I went through a bit of a, well, probably still am going through a love affair with Love Notions and they had a sale on relatively recently and I purchased a good few of their patterns and this was one of them. And this is the Whistler sweatshirt and this is my second version. So the first version I made was in a beautiful, um, really rich green colour that I got from Eco Bee and I wore that for St. Patrick's Day. But this one now is a kind of a glittery, I hope it does come up, a glittery French terry that I got from Carlo Fabrics. 
and then I found this ribbing in Carla Fabrics too which has a gold glitter in as well and I think two of these together look wonderful. A little bit seasonally appropriate right at the minute but this will be perfect now when um, it starts to get a bit cooler towards the end of the year. I think it's a fabulous pattern, the lovely shawl collar which really really isn't as tricky to um to construct as it looks. Um, I just sew on the buttons, they're not at all functional because there is no way my sewing machine would go through this many layers. Um, and then it's got the fabulous pockets here as well. It's just a really really cool and interesting construction. So I'm trying to hold it back far enough for you. So with this I make the uh, size small and I've now shortened this one by three inches. So I'm five foot nine so it's very very rare I shorten patterns. So in my first version I shortened the bodice by two inches and it was still a little bit too long. So yeah I, I just yeah when I, when I first looked at the pattern piece I was like this is more a tunic as opposed to a stretcher so it is quite long. So I shortened it by two inches and then this version I shortened it by three inches. What I had to do then was shorten the pockets because otherwise you see them poking out underneath but that wasn't a big deal the pockets are still plenty big enough so it's absolutely gorgeous I love how this comes out really cool construction really comfortable and um, to wear and just something different than a than a sweatshirt I think it's really really nice this pattern does come in a dress version and yeah it's just lovely it's just really really nice pattern I think it definitely has kind of ski vibes I think a bit of apri ski going about it I think it's lovely really really nice pattern and I would highly recommend it um, next up is what I'm wearing. So I've got these all listed here with me. So this is the Helen's Closet Gilbert shirt in this lovely fabric again from Carlo Fabrics. This was a remnant that I picked up when I went down to Catherine's lovely shop um, in May and it's got these beautiful cherries on it and it's a very very thin pinstripe and I was able to get the short sleeve tie front out of I think the remnant was a meter 25 which is really really great. So I'll stand up for you. So it's got the little tie here and it comes down to about here and I, I do shorten the sleeves um, a little bit from the pattern. It's a lovely pattern. I love the construction of this. It's got the burrito um, yolks. It's got a, it's, um, it's lovely clean inside as well. And it's a really interesting construction that you basically do the burrito when you've put on the collar. So literally the only thing you have to do after you've done the burrito is put in the sleeves. It's a really, really cool construction. So this is my second one. I made my first one, I think, was it last summer or the summer before? It must have been last summer in a lovely white um, linen. And I just fell in love with the pattern. It's fabulous. And this was my entry to So Fruity 23, which I hadn't really twigged. So I put this up on Instagram and then one of you lovely people said, can you not enter that for So Fruity? It's got cherries on it. Of course, that completely bypassed me. Of course I could enter it. So I did enter it. So yeah, absolutely beautiful pattern. Love it. And it's now... Um, I'm now going to make this shirt again, but I make it into a shirt dress, which I think would look really, really cute. So I make the size 10. I lengthen the bodice by four centimetres, so it does come up quite cropped. And then I shorten the sleeves by a good bit. Actually, the, the sleeve um, pattern piece comes down to probably around my elbow. So I much prefer it um, this length, but I think it's a lovely, lovely shirt. Really, really comfortable to wear. Lovely and summery. And uh, yeah, hoping it'll make a nice shirt dress now in the future. Um, oh, one more thing about this. I raised the bust start by an inch and a half. So if I stand up again, so you can see the bust start here, hopefully. So in my original version, it was way too low. So I uh, found a tutorial from By Hand London, which I'll link below, which is really, really great. And I raised the bust start and it's in a much better position now. And actually doing that wasn't as complicated as I thought it was going to be, which was a win. Next up is another Love Notions pattern and this is the summer Kai shorts. So I was determined this year to make shorts and I wanted to make them early in the summer so I'd have plenty of wear out of them during the summer. And I have worn them a few times, not as much as I'd like with our weather, but I'm really, really glad I have them. So they're in a beautiful um, olive green linen fabric from Beyond the Pink Door, which I picked up when I was down in Andrea's lovely shop. And I'm very happy that they came out. So these were a journey. So um, for the lining, I used a bit of the cherry fabric that I'm also wearing here. And then I had this leftover from a project last year, I think. So you, you don't really see this when I'm wearing them. Um, so my issue here was the pockets. So they have lovely pockets here and it's a lovely construction the way they actually go all the way across here. And um, so they're nice big pockets as well. However, I got very, very confused between, and I've got it written down here in case I forget, uh, between the pocket bag and the pocket lining. So this is actually the pocket bag in here, which is green. And this is the pocket lining, which is a stripey. In my head, I'd assumed the pocket lining wouldn't be seen and the pocket bag 
would be seen. So I really didn't want this to be shown. I wanted this all to be green and for a little flash of colour to be on the inside. But when I was making them, I realised that that wasn't really the case. It's not a massive issue. At least they do match. It wasn't some kind of funky colour that I chose. And I, do, I don't wear my t-shirts tucked in at all. I wear them um, over the top so you can't really notice. But I think they would look a little bit nicer if it was just a plain green. But, but anyway, you live and learn. Um, I made a size 14 and the length was absolutely perfect on me so um, the crotch length here was really good. It didn't give the finished garments um, garment measurements on the crotch length but I just I had a look at the pattern piece thought it looked okay so that worked out fine. The pockets are in the perfect position as well and the um, the waist is really good so that's just gathered by elastic at the back so it gives a nice uh, clean front, um, front waistband. The issue again came in the fit of say from about here down they just seem to kind of splay out like this it almost looked like a bit of a skirt so I ended up taking out a huge chunk out of here and a huge chunk out of here which wouldn't have been as bad except that I had put on the cuff and overlocked it and understitched it so it took me a long time to unpick everything take the chunk out and then re-sew everything and now I really love the fit in them I really really do I think they're lovely um a nice length and a nice shape now that I've taken out a few cheese wedges out of the size of them so, um they're lovely kind of light breezy short I think the length is really really good very happy that I did do that alteration despite it taking a long time very very happy I did it I just should have remembered to put that alteration on the paper pattern so if I decide to make them again it should already be there instead of now I'll probably have to remember what I did but they're a lovely lovely short pattern and I'm very happy I got them made up. I would love to make a pair in navy. I think it would go with an awful lot of things in my wardrobe for the sunny weather, which I'm hoping is going to come back. But no, these are lovely, lovely short. And I was just looking exactly for something like this with the uh, flat front uh, waistband and then the elastic at the back, which I think um, is really, really comfortable. I'm not quite brave enough to attempt a zip fly just yet. So very happy with how these came out in the end. But yes, it was a journey. Uh, next up is my Adam Sews hipster pouch. So this is um, called the Hipster Pouch and it's a lovely pattern by Adam from Adam Sew. So I'll link his channel below. He's Adam Sews on YouTube and on Instagram. And he released this pattern a few weeks, months ago, and it's called the Hipster Pouch. And it's a kind of a cross body bag like this. And I just thought it was a really, really cute pattern. And my mum had given me this blueberry fabric years and years and years ago. I think she bought it in America, New England somewhere go figure um a long time ago and I really wanted to do it justice so I found this pattern and thought it would be really cute I didn't have a huge amount of this fabric but this doesn't take too much so it's lovely lovely bag so that the front and the back are quilted so I don't know can you see that that is actually quilted and then it's quilted inside here is that open yeah so all that bit is quilted there and then it's got a lovely zip here it's got a zip at the top and I have been using this so this is full of baby wipes um and it's fully lined on the inside and it's got binding all around the inside as well so it's a lovely lovely neat finish if you knew what you were doing with bias binding that was a that was a learning curve for me a very steep learning curve i got most of this made up at the sewing social in the crafty studio there um a few fridays ago which was a lovely project to bring actually it's really really enjoyable then it's got these lovely tabs here and nice webbing then it's got all the hardware like the lobster clasps and the slider as well. So a very enjoyable project. Um, actually, you can probably see that the um, this green is the colour of my Kai shorts, so it matches. Um, really lovely pattern. Um, what else was I going to say about it? Um, yes, yeah, so the hardware I got from Quilter and Stitch and the zips, which I think are lovely match the fabric I got in Ecobee as well. So yeah, lovely pattern. And I have other uh, cotton, pointing up there because it's up there, that I'm going to make this again, except I'm going to omit the pocket at the front. I'm going to omit the ties. I'm just going to make it a lovely um, kind of quilted pouch. I think it would look really, really cute. So I hope I'm not losing daylight. It's now about, it's about 10 to 9 outside and still just about got enough daylight. Um, right, so next up is another little make and this is one that I got made up again at the Beyond the Pink Door retreat and it's little bucket hats for my boys. So this fabric is the reason I got my eucalyptus fabric for my kilo because I had put a shout out on my channel a few good few months ago looking for a Lego fabric. I couldn't find it anywhere and you guys came through and this um, fabric was recommended on Fabrics Galore website. So when I went on looking for this, I found it and then found that eucalyptus fabric. And if you're there buying one fabric, you may as well be there buying two fabrics. So that's where this came from. Uh, so it's leg on the outside and then inside is Peppa Pig. 
Peppa Pig came from Aldi Fat Quarters. I'm sure you've heard me about talk about Aldi Fat Quarters an awful lot on this channel. And then I've got a little cutie label here. This is Younger French Seams one and then Older French Seams one has one as well except his Peppa Pig is white. And it's a lovely pattern. It's the Waves and Wild Sandcastle Bucket Hatch which I believe is a free pattern and I've made an awful lot of these for my boys. They fit really really well. They're very easy to put together and they look super super cute. And one thing I've realised when both my boys are wearing these they're really really easy to spot in a crowd which is great which I hadn't considered when I purchased such kind of loud fabric. But I think I got both hats made up in maybe about two hours. Super, super quick make. Lovely, lovely pattern. So that's my bucket hats. Next up is another MET and this is another one that I got made up at the Beyond the Pink Tour sewing retreat because I wanted to bring something easy, something that I could do while chit-chatting as you do. So another Jennifer Lauren handmade um, tea again with the grown sleeves, the short version, and I thought I'd put on this little watermelon uh, sequin patch because I got this in my Beyond the Pink Door advent calendar last year. So I thought that would be kind of cute to put on, um, on a t-shirt while I was in Beyond the Pink Door territory. Um, so this you might be able to see, I've got chocolate ice cream on it. So despite washing this about four times um, on our summer holidays, I decided to wear my lovely Kai shorts and a white t-shirt and um, recommend that we get chocolate ice cream with a two-year-old, which is just a terrible, terrible idea. So you can just about see it there, but we hopefully will stall that out. So again, fabulous pattern. Um, I used Maraflex on this, which is kind of my first time using Maraflex as well. So you can just about see, I was able to use a straight stitch here with the Maraflex thread with it in the uh, top thread and the bobbin thread, and it gives a little bit of give, so you don't need to do a twin needle stitch. The jury is still out on it. I quite like the look of a twin needle. I know it's an absolute faff and really fiddly to do and my machine does not like doing twin needles but I do like the um, the effect of a twin needle. However, I do think the Maraflex thread is perfect for necklines. Really, really good. I think I might start doing that in future. But anyway, another Jennifer Lauren uh, handmade MET and I just love this pattern. This will not be my last. It really, really won't. So moving on, I hope we're all still with me. We're now probably about 16 minutes. Next up is a Lego tank and again beyond the pink door fabric because when you're in, when you've gone beyond the pink door yourself you get all the fabric you can possibly buy and just the stock there is just beautiful and I had to restrain myself to these few pieces. Um, this is the Lego tank from Itch to Stitch. It's a free pattern and it's just a standard tank top and I just love it. I had made one before um, which I use as pyjamas which I love in kind of watermelon print fabric and I thought this would be really really cute for the summer. I just bought one metre and I can easily get the tank top out of one metre. Um, I make a size 10 and I take an inch off the bodice so it does come out quite long. One thing about this is these um, the arm section here is quite high up, so I might consider lowering that a little bit. I think a few people have mentioned that as well. And it's fine for just wearing day to day, but if you're wearing it for any length of time and stuff, that might get a bit irritating, it might be quite high. But aside from that, it's a really, really good pattern and I would highly recommend it. I think it's really, really cute. And this fabric is just so fun. And I am very, very happy with my stripe matching. Can I show you? Let's see if I can manage this. This is a seam right here. So very, very happy. And it totally matches my nails. Wonderful. So that is my Lego tank. Then moving on to another pink door fabric. This is the Gen uh, Jennifer Lauren Juniper Cardigan in this beautiful yellow uh, faux angora fabric from Beyond the Pink Door. And when I was buying this, I mentioned that I wanted to make a Juniper Cardigan and the lovely Laurieann was wearing a, jun a Juniper Cardigan and she wore it so well. I was like, right, definitely this pattern. It's a fabulous pattern. It comes in two lengths, I believe. I think I made a few one. Yes, and I made a size 14, 12 gradient to a size 14 and I added two inches to the bodice length. It does come up quite cropped. So I wanted to add in that extra bit of length. So it's got beautiful saddle shoulders here, lovely seam line, and they call for a uh, clear elastic just to stable that a little bit, which was grand because I had clear elastic from my Beyond the Pink Draw advent calendar, which is super handy. Uh, so I did the full length sleeves. I didn't have to add anything to the sleeves, which is great. And then inside here, it recommends to put a bit of uh, grow grain ribbon, which is a really, really nice touch actually. And I think it gives um, lovely stability. And then um, I put a few buttons. Um, two of my buttonholes worked, two of them didn't, but I don't think you'd notice. So lovely, lovely pattern. Really enjoyed making it. Quite quick to come together, actually. The instructions are really good and just the most 
beautiful colour, really, really gorgeous, vibrant colour. So love it. Absolutely love it. I'm also having a little love flare with yellow at the at the minute. So next up is a couple of Makes My Boys. So this one is for older French scenes because I had bought um, the zips from my Adam Sews pouch, actually. And um, what else did I buy? Oh, yes. Uh, fabric from my Sunday romper, which will be in my hopefully my, my next uh, video. But the lovely Elway usually gives a little treat, like little sweets or chocolates or something. And um, sorry, it got really, really dark there for a second. The clouds are rolling in, so I better wrap this up. It's a Mother Nature is telling me to hurry it up. Um, so the lovely Elway usually puts in sweets or a chocolate or something. But recently she's been putting in panels, which I'd never used before. So panels basically are, I don't know the exact dimensions, but this section of fabric here that already has the pattern on it. And you just cut it um, as you would just a, a normal piece of fabric. So when my boy saw this, he absolutely loved it. So it's a scary crocodile and he wanted a t-shirt. So I was able to whip this up. This luckily enough was in my stash anyway from Ecobee. So it matched perfectly. And I was able to make him this little t-shirt. So this is the Waves and Wild Adventure Raglan, which is a jumper, I believe, but I just cropped off the sleeves and the um, just left off the hem and at the bottom to make it into a little t-shirt. The sun is going behind the clouds, that's why. So next up is a, another little make for my younger boy and this is a little cord set. So it's a little pair of shorts and it is a little t-shirt. So this beautiful dinosaur fabric that the lovely Agatha from um, In Agatha's Cottage gave me when I met her there a few months ago. And these just match, they're just the cutest cord set. They really, really are. So the t-shirt is um, the Waves and World Eclipse t-shirt. And then the little shorts are Bobbins and Buttons elasticated waist shorts. So um, I think I made him an age three in these and I make him an, an age two in the t-shirt. She's kind of coming out of now. I might have to start making him an age three. Um, the only thing I couldn't eke out was the sleeves, but luckily enough, I had a bit of blue fabric in my stash anyway. So these um, elasticated waist shorts are really great. They have you put in a channel for the elastic, but I far prefer, um, this is the way actually the Tilling the Buttons Juno pajamas are done. So you put in the elastic, then overlock it or sew it, and then fold it over and then sew it down. So it just means that the elastic doesn't move, which I think is, is a lot better, especially for smallies. So just love this cord set. I think it's really, really fun and he loves it too, even better. Right, we're on the penultimate make. And this is, um, again, another Beyond the Pink Tour fabric. And it's this beautiful burgundy cotton jersey and these lovely rose gold flowers here. And this is the Nina Lee Mayfair dress. This is my second version and uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So it's got a beautiful, oh, it's gone very dark. I'll turn on the light. Right, hopefully that's a bit better. Um, as I was saying, it's got this beautiful shawl collar and it's got, it's all, um, uh, very neat in here with a burrito up here um, where you just fold in all the edges, roll it all up and it gives this lovely, lovely, neat finish with no exposed edges. Then at the waist, it's got this lovely gathered section where you sew on a little waist tie. So these go all the way around. I did long sleeves and I did the knee length version and this is perfect for work. It's really, really great. Um, I really liked my other version and I knew as soon as I saw this fabric, I thought it'd be a great kind of staple work dress. So I think I'd get away with it during the summer, but I think this will really come into its own now, uh, coming towards the winter and Christmas in this beautiful kind of rich uh, cranberry burgundy colour. I think it's lovely, lovely. So I make a size 10 at the bust, gradient to a 14 at the hips. I add on an inch to the skirt and I add two inches to the sleeves and that sizing seems to work out perfectly for me. So yes, really, really lovely pattern and yeah, it looks really smart now at the ties and I love this gathered section here at the waist. I think it's really, really nice. I think it's a beautiful construction as well. So that is my Nina Lee Mayfair dress. And then finally, you're going to be bored of me talking about my Cricut machine, but I got a Cricut for my birthday and I was able to whip up this little t-shirt uh, for my baby nephew who was turning one very shortly. So again, this is the Waves and Wild Eclipse t-shirt and I was able to make him a little iron on on the front. So hopefully you can see it. So it says, it's my first birthday. I was able to do a lot of it in silver and then some in gold and then the first is in glitter and I think it's really, really cute. And this, um, the same fabric as uh, the sleeves of the dinosaur cord is lovely um, kind of powder blue, baby blue fabric from Ecobee. And I found this ribbing in my stash, been there for years and years, but I needed the tiniest little strip and it matched perfectly. So this is my little uh, Cricut t-shirt and I've got a little made by Auntie um, little rosy teeth label on it. So love how this came out.
So that was a roundup of everything I've got made since the middle of May. So thank you very much if you are still here listening and apologies for the lighting. That was very unprofessional lighting. Um, as you can see, none of this is professional. It's basically me and my phone and daylight when I have it. Um, there are two more things that I got finished here and um, you'll see them behind me. This is my Nina Lee Q dress and this is my Deer and Doe Magnolia dress, except that this needs buttons and both of them need hemming. So I thought I really couldn't tell you that I've made them yet. So um, I haven't even taken pictures of them or anything. So when I do, they'll be in my next uh, summer makes video. But I, th I thought I'd show them here because I have made them, just not fully, fully made them. So thank you very, very much for sticking with me. I do hope you enjoyed that. I got quite a bit of done now in the last few months. I really did. I've still got a good few things on my summer plans that I can, I can busy myself with now for the next few months. Um, my most pressing plan now is to make this beautiful fabric into a dress, which is gorgeous viscose from the, Beyond the Pink Door. We'll see how we get on with that. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any questions, if I've forgotten anything, if I haven't been clear on anything, please forgive me and just leave me a comment below. Um, you know how much I love having the chats. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please, um, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing. I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers. So that's all from me. I do hope you enjoyed it and uh, I certainly enjoyed making all those things and I did enjoy sharing them with you as well. So thank you very, very much and I will see you all again in a video very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.